Hello, it is Acacia Developer here, and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how to create a Portal 2 map. Now first of all, before we begin, you'll need to have Portal 2 installed, and you'll have to have Portal 2 authoring tools installed as well. Once both of them are installed, open up Portal 2 authoring tools, and then double click on Hammer World Editor, and this window which you see right here, should appear. I'm not going to ramble anymore. I'm going to get straight into it. We're going to go File. We're then going to go New. And we should have these four viewports appear on our screen. Now, sometimes um, these can appear uh, looking a bit weird. And what, what I mean by this, th this is specifically relevant for people who haven't ran Hammer Editor before on their computer. But sometimes uh, the viewports can display mismatch like this. So w one viewport is bigger than the other. Um, before before you ask, no, we, we don't want it like this. It's not going to help you at all. Just go Control A um, and that will automatically resize all your views. Now secondly, there's another thing to consider if you're running Hammer Editor on your PC for the first time. Just go up here to Camera, it's on the uh, top left of the top left viewport. Uh, click on this and we click on 3D Shaded Textured Polygons. Now basically, what this will do, um, this is your 3D viewport. So this is what you'll use to actually view your map as you're making it in 3D. And if we had it set to wireframe, which is the default setting, then all we'd see is the wireframe of the actual level and we won't see any textures or models. So it's best to make sure that you're set on sh um, 3D shaded texture polygons before you start anything. What we'll want to do is we want to go over to here. This is the block tool. Click on this button here. Now, basically, in order to create our first piece of geometry, we're going to need to drag it across this viewport. Now, it's useful to consider that this port is our 3D viewport for viewing our level in 3D. This one is our top uh, viewport so you you can think of this as the bird's eye view of your map down here we have um, the side view and this one here displays um, the side view again but it's from a different angle if you get what I mean we're now going to create a floor for our test chamber now the best way to do this is to drag out your floor in the top viewport and as you can see we've got some things appearing here this is uh, what it looks like in your 3d view and this is what it looks like in the side view and here it is in the other side view so we can see it from all angles now this this object that we've dragged out it hasn't actually been placed yet but once you've got the desired size of the object that you want to create the piece of geometry uh, keep it as it is and we press enter on our keyboard now we're going to deselect it and there we go that there is our piece of geometry we can see it in all the viewports um, it's it's kind of it's missing in the 3d viewport at the moment mainly because the the actual camera is inside it so w what we're going to do is we're going to reposition the camera and in order to do this um, what I use is WASD um, that's to move and I preferably like to use the arrow keys to actually rotate the camera so we can rotate it up move up this way we can rotate it down and we can move down this way and as you can see we can see our floor here um, but there is another way to do it um, what a, a lot of people like to use the um, the Z key or um, Z if you're um, living in the United States but if you just press the Z key on your keyboard um, a little crosshair 
should appear um, in the center of the viewport and you can use your WASD to move around but as opposed to using the arrow keys to rotate the camera you're using your mouse so this is this is a lot this is probably easier for most people a lot more intuitive I'd recommend experimenting with it to see, see what suits you anyway so in order to retexture this um, test chamber floor we're gonna select it now there is um, a few ways of selecting it. Uh, we can select it in the 3D viewport, or um, we can select it on um, in the 2D viewports with the little X in the middle, or we can select it by clicking directly on the line. It's tough to do, so yeah. But if you select it in the middle here, uh, not the outside or the X, then you won't be able to select it. So. Uh, for, for ease, I'd recommend just selecting it in your 3D viewport. But anyway, what I what um what I was going to go on to was um changing the textures. So what we want is is we want a tile floor, don't we? So we click on our geometry, and we navigate over to this bit. Now you should see like a little square with uh some sort of texture or something in it. This is your um, texture panel. If we click browse. Uh, this will open your texture window now by default the um, textures should look this size but I prefer my textures to display much larger in the texture window so it's easier to see them and I can see a lot more detail in them um, in order to do that you just go to this drop down box down here and 512 by 512 in my opinion is a bit too big so I like 256 so now we can see um, a considerable amount of detail on these textures and that's good. The best way to find a texture you want is think of um, kind of like a keyword that relates to the kind of texture you want. So in, in our case we want a tiled floor so you know don't be scared type in tile and we can see what comes up. So let's say this is no good we don't hear this it's not a portable surface but i i know that these two textures we can shoot portals on them so we're going to use these for now so um let's go for a let's just go for a plain tiled floor here so as you can see now we've selected that you select it by double clicking on it by the way the um texture window will disappear and at the side here uh, our little texture image has updated to the texture we've selected. Now we just need to apply this texture to the floor geometry. Now in order to apply a texture we go over to here which is um, the apply current texture tool I presume. <laughs> um, but we click on this it's like a cube with bricks on it. Click on it and literally it will transform the floor into that texture and there we go now that we have our test chamber floor we're going to start implementing walls into our level now in order to implement a wall we're going to drag in the top view look at where I'm dragging we're dragging at the side of the floor because you know this is where we want our wall or one of our four walls that will line um, this test chamber and we can see that it's it's displayed in the 3D viewport if we navigate over here we can see that it's there but um, the only problem is you know oh no it's it's in the floor it's not actually going upwards how, how do we make it go upwards well it's, it's easy we just go to one of the side views here you can pick which one you want I'm gonna drag this upwards a bit as you can see it's moved in the 3D viewport it's now on top of the floor that's a good thing as you can see as I'm dragging um, as I'm dragging it upwards, it's getting higher and higher in the 3D viewport. The same goes for the other side viewport as well. Um, and there we go, that's um, one of our test chamber walls. And we can press enter. And of course, that will create the um, geometry. The reason why that the, the tile texture is automatically applied to this geometry that we've created is because this is the texture that is selected at the moment. If you, let, let's say um, we go back into textures in here and we select 
um, this texture and we create a piece of geometry let's say over here and then press enter quickly we can see since we've selected that texture it's automatically going to appear on all the geometry we create from now on so I'm just going to delete that because we don't need that an issue we have at the moment is how high is this wall exactly we don't we don't really have anything to go by but um, luckily we do have an object that we can implement which we can go by and that this is um, the player start entity so we're going to insert an entity and this is where the player is going to start and it gives us um, quite a good reference so we can see how big the test chamber is relative to the player so if we go to the side here and we click the entity tool which can also be accessed via shift e um, we have switched to the entity tool and if we go over to here we can um, select what kind of object we want if we click on this drop down menu there are <laughs> loads of objects to um, choose from but at the moment we just want the info player start this is um, the default entity um, d d if you're working with entities do not ever try and place them in the 2d viewport because I've tried it before and it, it's it's a bit complicated and and it's it's just easier and much more intuitive to just click in the 3d viewport right let's say here and there is your entity so your your player has been placed and now we can see how big the actual test chamber is so ju just imagine that the, the player's size is this info player start because it is about the size of this um, entity here so if we look back mm, that's a bit too big do you think it's a bit too big? no, okay I'll tell you what, what we'll do is we'll shrink this floor a bit there you go uh, it's, it's just trying to you shouldn't make your test chambers too big I mean you want them to be a reasonable size um, but you know if you're if you're only working on your your first map then it, it doesn't really matter so okay so we've resized that a bit um yeah we might want to change the height of this a bit yeah there we go okay now what 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 we're going to do now is we're going to duplicate this wall so and, and you may be wondering well why not just you know select the geometry tool and create another wall opposite manually uh, well, well sometimes it can be tedious to do this and it's just it's just easier if if we do it this way so what, what we're going to do is I'm going to hold down the shift key I'm going to then um, click my left uh, mouse button I'm going to hold down and then I'm going to drag so we want the other wall on the opposite side here and then you release your left mouse button release the shift key and we have a duplicate of that wall at the other side of the test chamber so we don't have to worry about um, manually creating geometry every single time but but now what we want is we want another wall this side and another wall this side as well so um, we need two more walls in order to um, box in the test chamber so what I'm going to do here is we can use the duplicate trick again so we're going to click and hold shift and left mouse button and we're going to duplicate another one over here now you might be thinking well you know what the hell are you doing you know this it's it's in the wrong it's in the wrong direction you need to rotate it and 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 that's exactly what we're going to do right so what we're going to do is we're going to click on the geometry in the 3d view which it's selected um, in the 2d viewports now in the bird's eye view what we're going to do is we're going to click on this piece of geometry once and that changes it now you've noticed that there are now these little circles around the vertices of this geometry. Now what these do is these allow us to rotate this piece of geometry. So 
we're going to click on one of these corners, um, left mouse button, hold down, and we can slowly drag. And as you can see, that is rotating the piece of geometry. So now it's in the correct direction, so it can be put into here. We can resize it a bit here to match up with this wall. And there we have it. It's We've now got another wall here. And of course, like you've probably guessed, we're going to do... Um, we're going to duplicate this again across here. And this is then our test chamber. So as you can see, we've got our floor. We've got our four walls. It looks lovely, doesn't it? As for the ceiling, I think it's bloody obvious. So let's just do it. It's a shift, um, left mouse button, duplicate up there. So we've basically, we've duplicated the floor um, onto the top of the walls. Um, and that forms our ceiling. You know, there's there's a lot of people who kind of look at Hammer Editor and they go, Oh, God, that looks so complicated. But in truth, it's it's logical, really. And, and, it, and it's, it is really, really easy to use when you know what you're doing. If we wanted to um, change the textures on the walls, it's, it's obvious, we just click on uh, the wall we want to change. We go over to the textures and we select the texture we want. So, uh, let's just say we want to change it to a checkerboard. We select it, select the texture and click on the apply current texture tool. And there we go. If you want to texture um, multiple geometry in your level without having to select them individually and texture them individually, then you can select one, hold down control, select the other, and select that one. And there you go. So you can select multiple objects by um, left mouse button and control. And basically, click the apply text um, current texture tool. And there we go, your entire wall is now checkerboard. <laughs> it looks a bit of an eyesore, but um, it's, it's, th this, this is really good for like a demonstration map. Now, what we want to do is, be before we do anything else, we need to save the map. And th this is an important aspect of Hammer because we, we don't want to lose our maps. So we're gonna go file and we're gonna go save as. Uh, this is kind of like the default directory, I think. I may create um, a new folder just called um, uh, Tutorial Maps. And in here, we're going to create. Uh, we're going to. Th this is actually going to be the name of the map. Now, you've got to be very, very careful with how you um, name your map because. It cannot actually have any spaces in it. If if your map name has spaces in it, then it won't work. So, I'd say, let's say if you want to call it tutorial map, we can have it like that. But, but you know, if, if you do want spaces in there, what I'd say is instead of doing like a space like that, um, do an underscore. And basically, that will act kind of like a space. It will separate the words. Uh, you can read it. It's readable. Um, but you, you cannot have spaces. So that's why we're using this underscore here. Now, anyway, we'll click save. And there we go. That is our map saved. I think that will do for today's tutorial. If you like this video and want me to continue on with this Hammer Editor Portal 2 series, then feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching. It's Acacia Developer here, and I'll see you soon.